Hey guys, so today I'm going to be looking at psychology experiments with interesting results. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. Mice were put on two sides of a wall with a door in. Only the right mouse could open the door. Slowly, they filled the left mouse's room with water and eventually, when right mouse saw them in danger, they opened the door. However, mice that had previously been on the left side were now on the right. Mice who had previously been wetted opened the door considerably faster because they knew how unpleasant it was to be in the other scenario. Basically, mice have empathy. Oh my gosh, this makes me feel a different way about mice. Mm. Wow, I didn't know mice were like smart, you know. I mean, that's crazy. What? We're going to be learning so many new things in this video. Hedonic adaption. Put simply, a person who had just won the lottery and another person who had just been paralyzed took a survey to measure their life contentment. Obviously, it was high and low, respectively. However, they both took the same survey a year later and both scored similarly. The point being that regardless what happens to you in life, good or bad, you will always adapt and spend most of your life feeling neutral. <gasps> That's crazy. I think I understand this. I guess that's life, you know, neutral. No matter where you are, you're just gonna feel neutral. There's always like up and downs, basically. One time I participated in a paid research experiment. I was basically tricked into thinking I was drunk. I was placed in a room with two other people and we were instructed to drink vodka with cranberry juice over a period of time while we socialized. After we drank, I was placed in a room where I had to read some flashing words on a computer. I felt pretty junk at this point. When the researcher came back into the room, he gave me my car keys and said I was never actually given alcohol. He briefly told me that because I was anticipating drinking for this experiment, that my brain had tricked me into feeling the effects of being intoxicated. I immediately snapped out of it and was completely amazed at how I felt. <gasps> oh my gosh, is this like the placebo effect or something? Like you think something's gonna work and then it actually works or something? I don't know, man. That's crazy. Whoa, the brain is a crazy thing. I want to try this. So they actually felt like they were drunk. I want to try this because I've never been drunk before. And I just want to see what it would be like for a person who's never been drunk to think that they're drunk. You know, because I'm sure this person has been drunk before. That's why their brain kind of knew how to act when they were drunk or like the effects of being drunk. But I've never been drunk before. So I wonder how I would feel being fake drunk, you know, like how my brain would trick me into thinking I was drunk. I don't know. Do you guys get what I'm trying to say? Oh, that's interesting. Solomon Atch experiment on conformity. He set up a test wherein he would show three lines of different lengths to five or six individuals. I forgot the exact number. Who had to state which line was the longest of the three. The thing is, only the last individual is the participant and the others are actors paid to answer in a specific manner. For the first three questions, they choose the correct answer, but later on they start choosing the wrong one. The participants are conflicted as to whether they will say the correct answer or conform to the wrong answer as to not be judged by others or due to self-doubt of their own answers. In the end, most do conform. It's really interesting since it shows how powerful conformity is in the face of doubt, up to a point that some even question their own sanity during the test. <gasps> oh my gosh. I feel like I would do the same thing too. I feel like I would choose the wrong answer as well because everyone's choosing the wrong answer. <laughs> wow, that's crazy because this makes me think like, what are we scared of, right? When we conform, like, what are we scared of? Or like, do we really just think that we're crazy and our right answer is wrong? Ooh. Another variation of the experiment also had interesting results. It had the same setup with five individuals with the last person being the participant. However, this time some of the actors say the wrong answer while one actor says the correct one. There was an increase in participants who would choose the correct answer and avoid conformity. It shows how much doubt one can have on oneself when alone, but be brought back to self-confidence when they find outside support. <gasps> oh my god. 
oh my gosh that's crazy i would do the same too <laughs> as long as i have that one person who chooses the same answer as me i would feel a bit safe i think it's about feeling safe or something or like afraid of being judged or something i don't know that's crazy this is just crazy to read oh my gosh can someone do this in real life now <laughs> I want to watch it, honestly. Split brain studies. One example. By providing deferring information to each hemisphere of the brain in split brain individuals. What? They found that people would actually physically grab their own hand with their other hand if they saw it making a mistake. Basically, each side of the brain controls one side of your body. And in split brain people, you can actually make both sides display a disagreement with the other which is insane if you think about it. Oh, some individuals have split brain? What? Oh my gosh. That is insane. Like what, your brain is fighting with each other? Oh. There's another similar experiment where people with split brains have one eye able to see a picture and the other eye can't see it. Then they draw the picture with one hand. While they're drawing the picture, if you ask them, they have no idea what the image they're being shown is. It's like they can't see it even though they can draw it. I'm so confused. What is this? Wow. Oh my gosh. This is so interesting. Wait, does that mean like because the Wait. What? Also, if you give someone like this a fork and cover their left eye, they'll be able to tell you what you use it for, but not be able to recall what it's called. Then cover the other eye and they'll instantly be able to tell you that it's a fork, but we will have no idea what you use it for. I'm mind blown by this. I, what is going on? This is, this is crazy. So like one brain has knowledge of this and another brain has a different knowledge of this, but it can't be combined kind of thing. Like it can't communicate to each other. That is the same thing. <laughs> I'm so confused. Okay, let's move on. I don't know the name of it, but apparently two people become closer if they survive through something together. Not even actual surviving death scenarios, but anything that has you on your toes and heart racing, like a roller coaster. Get your crush to sit with you on a roller coaster. <laughs> They'll become close to you now, like go through a haunted house together. Well, okay, cool. Misattribution of arousal. Men who had just walked across bridge, either steady or unsteady, were approached by a female psychology student posing to do a project on the effects of exposure to scenic attractions on creative expression. The men had to complete a questionnaire and write a short dramatic story about a picture she provided and she gave them her phone number if they had more questions. Men who walked across the shaky bridge were more likely to call her up because they misattributed the arousal from the bridge to the woman. Wait, the shaky bridge causes arousal? <laughs> or like it just makes their heart beat faster or something and they associate it with a woman or something? Well, make your crush scared. <laughs> if you stare into a dimly lit, that is, candle lit mirror for 10 plus minutes, you start to see hallucinations. What individuals see tends to vary, but they've used this as a test to simulate schizophrenia before because some see monsters, deformities, general weird stuff. I did a variation of it for a mate at uni and completely wimped out of it. After my face started not looking like my face anymore, I had a complete dissociation. I stopped looking and just waited at the time. This just made me think because I, <laughs> I don't know why, but like it was dark, right? And I was just staring at myself at the mirror for a while and the more you look at yourself the more you feel like you don't recognize yourself anymore weird i don't know if this has anything to do with it but like i feel like the more you stare at someone when it's dark the more you don't recognize them or like the more you see their features as different i don't know why it was weird i don't know what i was doing honestly i think i was bored or something and i was just like there have been some experiments conducted, but the negativity effect, negativity bias is really sad to me. It basically says that negative things have a greater emotional and psychological toll 
on our health than positive and neutral things. I agree. Hate that. So you got an A on a test. That's great. But you totally fail a test and the world crumbles and it's a total disaster. A hundred things can go right and work perfectly throughout the day, but it goes totally undetected in our minds. Then someone cuts us off in traffic and we fume and rage. I learned about this theory almost three years ago and I think about it all the time. Reminds me to appreciate and notice the many little things in my day that do go right. Oh my gosh, I feel like some people need this. <laughs> that's crazy though because that's so true. You know, like how tiny little negative things we will remember forever, but like the happy things, we don't really remember it that well. I mean, of course we do remember it, but it doesn't have that much of an effect on us than the negative sad things, you know? It's just like someone insulting you and calling you names or something, right? You will remember that forever. But like if someone compliments you, you'll feel good about it, obviously. But it doesn't last as long as a negative one, if you know what I mean. Like obviously you will remember both, but the negative one has more of an impact on you. Like it overpowers the positive thing, which is sad. I wish the positive overpowers the negative, you know. Ugh. Regner and his white bears. Essentially, people who were instructed to not think about a white bear found themselves thinking about it more than those actively trying to think about one. <laughs> well, is this like reverse psychology or something? Don't think about a white bear. And they think about it more <laughs> than the people who are trying to think about it. What? Wait, does this apply to other things or not? Like don't do this and you think about doing it more than the person who has to do it or something or does this only apply to white bears that's interesting well that's it for the video hope you guys enjoyed tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are and as always thanks for watching hope you guys liked it and i'll see you guys next time bye